Let us pray. Lord, open our ears. You may hear the words that you have for us at this time where we are. Open our hearts to receive the grace by which you have brought us together to listen, to ponder, to reflect, to receive, to be inspired. By your grace and in your name. Amen. Amen. The lessons appointed for this fifth Sunday in Lent, which we've just heard from John's Gospel and from the prophet Ezekiel, speak powerfully to our experiences in this time of the coronavirus pandemic and to what it's like for us to be staying apart from one another, having our lives and our routines disrupted. They speak to our fears, to the terrible reality of it all, and to all of our unsettled emotions and questions about what to do and what to expect in such times. Our gospel account of the raising of Lazarus is one of the most emotional stories in the Bible. I don't think I ever really appreciated as much as I do now all the many strong emotions churning in this story. We need to acknowledge as well ourselves in these days for all of us, all our emotions, all that's going on, our feelings of grief and sorrow, fear, anger, questioning and doubt. There's a lot going on in us and around us in these days that we may even find ourselves or others trying to ignore or to tamp down, claiming, well, I'm not upset. You're upset. As we'll see, Jesus got emotional too. Well, as the story begins, Jesus receives word that his friend, Lazarus, is gravely ill. Jesus and his disciples are two days' journey away from Bethany and from the home of Lazarus Martha, with Martha and Mary. Jack, Jesus, however, did not start right away to go to see Lazarus after hearing the news. John, our narrator, narrator of this gospel, said that this was because Jesus knew what would happen when he got, did arrive. But I wonder whether Jesus, as a human being, like us, also may have had some denial or resistance to facing such bad news. He didn't want to deal with it. He delayed a little bit. But after two days, Jesus announces that they will go to Lazarus. The disciples express a range of conflicting emotions, from fear at how dangerous it would be to go down to Judea, to denial that if he has fallen asleep, he'll be okay to blind fatalism. Oh, let us go and die with him. On the way, I think Jesus heard that Lazarus had died. And as he approached the village, Martha came out to meet him. Now, Martha was in charge of the household, caring for her brother Lazarus and her sister Mary. Martha, as we hear, chides Jesus, saying, if you had been here, he would not have died. Nevertheless, we trust God. We welcome you here. Jesus said to her, your brother will, will rise again. Martha replies abstractly, really from her head. Yes, I know that he will rise again on the last day. Martha continues, or Jesus continues saying to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live, even beyond death. Do you believe this? And Mary says, yes, Lord. And maybe part of what she's really doing is offering lip service. She's not really such a deep belief. Sometimes our faith at times is like that. It's in our heads. It's an abstraction. Yes, of course we believe this. Maybe we say what we believe with some ambivalence. I believe it, but I'm not really sure about it. 
really trusting God is a hard thing, even for someone as competent and seemingly faithful as Martha. Now Martha goes and gets married, her sister, if she comes to Jesus. And emotions in the story go up all around him. Mary kneels before him and says to Jesus, I believe, through clenched lips, with some cold fury, if you had been here, he would not have died. These are emotional times. Jesus was deeply moved, disturbed in spirit. And when they said to him, come and see where he was buried, that is, be with us in the present, Jesus wept. And then Jesus began to weep went with them to the tomb. At the same time, there were others who scoffed and who ridiculed him, and that is a risk that we share, that we experience when we share our feelings. And the key to what happened next is that Jesus, our model and guide, looked upward. When he arrived at the tomb, he looked upward to God called upon God, he turned to God with thankfulness that God was there, that he could turn to him, with gratitude that we have a loving and merciful as well as powerful God. He simply did that. He looked up to God. There was no magic formula or tricks up his sleeve. And trusting God, he called Lazarus to come out. He called for life to go on. He called for the people to receive this Lazarus, who they all thought was dead as well. And then as he came out, he said to them, unbind him, and let him go on. Our first lesson is just as powerful as this one. It begins with an amazing vision. The Lord brought me out, says Ezekiel, brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley. It was full of bones. Notice that Ezekiel did not just end up in a wilderness or in the desert, in a desert place, and hope to escape as soon as he could, go back somewhere else. Ezekiel was brought there by the Spirit of the Lord, much as we find ourselves here with God in these times. There may be things we need to learn in this time of pandemic when we pay attention to where we are. I'm not saying that God chooses to inflict coronavirus upon us, but I'm saying that the Lord has brought us here that we might learn and grow and Ezekiel saw all the bones around him. Devastating sight. The question arose for him, can these bones live again? And we ask such questions in the midst of this pandemic and in other situations in our own lives. Maybe in relationships, can there be life again? In questioning vocation or what the future may hold, what will life be? When we feel mortal and vulnerable, and in such situations, we may admit that we don't know. We just don't know. We can only bow our heads and say, oh, Lord, you know. Lord, you know. That humble response is a good one, always accepted by our Lord. And then God calls us, as he called Ezekiel, to act as we can and gives us the grace to go on, to move ahead, to carry forward the work God has for us. So the Lord called Ezekiel. Three times he called Ezekiel. The first time he prophesied to the bones. And Ezekiel did what he could. 
He called and prophesied the bones, and all the bones began to stir, and they joined together, and they became covered with sinews and with flesh. And then the Lord called him again to prophesy, to call on the Spirit, and he did. And there, became, there was new life in those bones, and they rose up, a mighty host. And the Lord called him a third time, as the Lord calls us again and again called him a third time to prophesy to the people for they that they to tell them that they are my people and I will be their God. As I reflect on these two stories of life and death, and all that they stir up and evoke in us, I believe there are three things that we need to hear and that we can be doing in these times inspired by these stories. First, we shall wait upon the Lord. We shall wait upon the Lord, not just wait upon our own wits and strength alone, because we're not alone. We wait upon the Lord, and it's there that we shall find renewal, and that we shall raise up, walk, run, our psalm this morning describes waiting upon the Lord like a night watcher waits for the morning, knowing, trusting, believing that the morning will come, even though it is still now very dark. Yet shall we wait upon the Lord. Second, we shall care for one another and for ourselves. We can practice compassion as Jesus felt compassion for his friends, and as we feel with Jesus, who, who lives and cared and trusted God, and we also shall live and care and trust God in the face of all that we do not understand. We do what we can. And third, let us pay attention to the present to God and God's blessings in our lives now. Let's not be as anxious or fixated on the past the way it used to be or on what will come because we don't know that yet. But let us live each day as well as we can in these challenging times, living them with the Lord, living them caring for one another, living them caring and pacing May God's peace be with us all.